This is why you can't be around a lot of people. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Because I know many of you, you feel the exact same way as I do. You just can't be around most people. You can't get around them. And yet you may not know the reasons why. You may not understand why you're having this experience, why you're experiencing these emotions, why you feel so much discomfort. It's like when you were younger, you were taught, you're meant to get around other people. You're meant to be, uh, you're meant to socialize. You're meant to be friendly and outgoing. You're meant to talk to people. You're meant to make friends. You were taught all of these things when you were young. And yet now you feel like you don't want to be around most people. And that's not to say that they don't want to be around you. If you are a chosen one, you will find them gravitating towards you. Even though, quite clearly, you don't want the same things that they want. You don't really desire their interests, their company. But they quite clearly desire yours. So you feel uncomfortable around most people. You feel like you're walking on eggshells. You just feel like you don't even want to be around them. And it really is as simple as that. It's because you don't share the same interests. You don't really have anything in common. You don't want what they want. And I'm going to get deeper into it. I'm going to explain exactly the reasons why this happens and why it is the way that it is. So if that sounds good to you, hit that thumbs up button down below. Let's get this message out there to other survivors and chosen ones who may need to see it. And I'd just like to apologize. I know there's a lot of laughing and screaming in the background. What I got here, it was very quiet and peaceful. So I'm still gonna continue with the message and try to do my best. I know there's gonna be thousands of you watching this who need this information. So, but yeah, hit that thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe, click on notifications, and then you will receive the, what well, you will be notified when I upload a video in the future. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. Now let's get deeper into this message. You don't want to be around most people, but it's like they obsessively want to be around you. And the reason why they want to be around you is because you have this amazing energy while they just pretend they're not really happy, they're actually very miserable, they feel incomplete without you. And when they're around you, it provides them some form of relief. Nothing like the kind of happiness that we get to experience, but it's like a temporary relief from their pain and sadness, because normally they are experiencing depression. But we don't want to be around them because we, we feel uncomfortable around most people. Because there's always like this elephant in the room. You know when you get around them that they are being fake. That's not who they really are. They're wearing a mask. There's something else underneath them. There's things that they know that they're not revealing to you. They're playing a character. They're putting on an act. They don't want you to see who they actually are. Because as I just said, who they actually are it's a very miserable, depressed person. They're not happy at all. They've got a lot of skeletons in the closet. There's a lot of things that they're going through. Well, as for you or I, we're the exact opposite of them. I mean, I feel pretty good now. Pretty much every day I'm usually happy. I have a lot of motivation. Of course, as you can see in my videos, I get on you every day. But there was a time when I didn't feel this good. There was a time when I was very miserable. I was depressed. 
I was going through a lot. And as like you, it wasn't like how it is with these people who wear a mask and they be, uh, they're fake. With myself, I was more just honest and open about it. I wasn't trying to hide it, but I was going through something. But of course, because they're fake, even when you're open and honest about who you are and what you're going through, you're not going to be able to have that conversation with them. They're not going to want to hear it. Instead, they're going to carry on with this toxic positivity, pretending as though everything is okay, when really it's not. Because deep down inside, they're the same as you. They're going through a lot. And that's why they don't like it when you come to them, when you're not happy, when you're not feeling well. They don't want to hear it because it reminds them of their true feelings and their situation. Because unlike us, they are emotionally numb. They're disconnected from themselves and their emotions. And they could be going through a lot, but it's like, although there is inside of them, there's a lot of shame and a lot of pain and sadness. They push it away. They don't want to feel it. It's like they can't be vulnerable. They're too afraid to even cry, to let it out, to just be who they actually are. Well, as for you or I, if we're going through something, we can be sad. We can experience it as it actually is. We don't have to hide it. We don't have to run from it. We don't have to pretend like it isn't there. And that's because we're more emotionally mature. We have an identity. We have a sense of self. We are connected to our emotions. We know who we are. Well, as for them, they're just gone with the wind. They're at the whim of everyone and everything else. They can't just be who they are. They have to be whatever they think that other people want to see. Whatever makes them look good so that it makes them feel good about themselves. But for us, of course, it's a very uncomfortable experience to be around these types of people. Because we don't want what they want. We don't want a fantasy. We don't want to pretend like everything's okay. While everything's really just falling apart. We don't want to be like that. Instead, we'd rather just be our authentic selves. We'd rather express our true emotions and say things like it really is. That's just the type of personalities that we are. And that's how myself, how I've been able to create these videos for the past five and a half years. And that's why this vibes with you. That's why you watch this content. Because you do value the truth. You value yourself, your identity, and you value reality. They don't. They can do without it. And in fact, they're quite happy, quite comfortable without it. But then I say happy, they're not really happy at all. Deep down, they are miserable. They are depressed. Of course, they would be because there's all of this stuff going on inside of them. And they're not letting it come up. They're not letting it surface. They keep pushing it down. They bottle it up instead of accepting it and then dealing with it. Because that's really the process is that first we must learn to accept it. We must learn to accept our thoughts, our feelings and what is actually going on inside of them, inside of us. But of course, that's something that they don't want to do. It's something they don't want to do. This is why you feel uncomfortable around them. Because you look at them and it's like you know you're dealing with a, sh a shell of a person. Like they're not even really who they say they are. You can tell they're wearing a mask. 
I mean, it might look great at first if you're not aware of it, if you're not attuned to it. You might think, oh, this looks like a fun person. They look like they've got everything figured out. They've got it all together. They know exactly what they're doing. And then you get to know them and you realize it's fake confidence. Sometimes even arrogance. They act like they've got it all together, but really their lives are falling apart. They don't know what they're doing. And that's another problem as well, because you may be connected to yourself and your emotions. You know who you are. You know what you're doing. You know what you want out of life. And they don't like that when they get around you. That makes them feel uncomfortable as well. It makes them feel insecure. Because they're just pretending and you actually do know what you're doing for real. You're really about that. You know what's going on. And they don't like that. They don't, want to, they don't want you to be in charge. They don't want you to be not only in charge of them, but not even in charge of yourself and your own life. Because if you can dictate the course of events in your life, it's only going to reveal their insecurities in even more and how fake they are and how they just pretend to have everything figured out. And that's why the world is such a mess today, because people like us are being kept down. Well, we are the ones, we are the true leaders. We're chosen ones, we're empaths. We should be in leadership roles, leading people in this world to the right place. And of course, that right place is not a destination in this world. That right place is actually inside of ourselves, our own darkness. Because we all have a shadow self. I'm getting more into spirituality now. But yeah, we all have a shadow self. It's this side of us, this darkness. These things that we don't want to accept. These things that make us feel ashamed. And as soon as we confront those things, that's when we're able to grow. And if you are a target of gang stalking, or maybe you've been involved with a narcissist, you will have been confronted with your shadow self on so many occasions. So it's constantly in front of you. And it's like you're being forced to deal with it. So that's one of the pros, one of the benefits of being around narcissists and being a target of gang stalking. It's that if you do confront it, instead of just pushing it away all of the time, at some point you will mature emotionally. You will grow, you will develop, and you will find yourself within. You will get to know who you really are, and you will develop a very strong sense of self. But as for them, it's like they do the opposite. They never take accountability. They run from it. They deflect their shame onto the target or their victim. And that's why when you look at them, it looks like they're so far behind. They're so immature, so childish. Like they haven't got things figured out. They don't know who they actually are. They don't know what they're doing. They're awful leaders. You follow them, they will always lead you to the wrong direction. But you pay attention to your own internal compass and that will never lead you wrong. Trust your own intuition. Don't let them gaslight you. Don't let them brainwash you. You know who you are. You know what you're doing. But this is why you feel so uncomfortable around them. You feel uncomfortable around most people. Because they feel uncomfortable with themselves. And really, next time you're around them or having a conversation with them, just stop and observe them. You can tell they're not comfortable in their own skin. It's like they're doing anything they can to try and escape. They want to escape from their own minds, their own bodies, because they're not comfortable there. And that's why when you're around them, everything's so disorganized. There's all of this chaos, all of this drama, all of this dysfunctional behavior. It's because they're trying to project 
these negative emotions onto you and they're trying to recreate the internal chaos in the external environment so that they feel more comfortable within. That's why things never seem to flow with them. That's why things are always up and down. It's like this emotional roller coaster. It's because of their internal state. They're never at rest. They never feel good about themselves. It's like one minute they're up, then they're down. So they're pulling you in all different directions. But I can assure you that if you are around someone who does feel comfortable within themselves, you will feel comfortable around them as well. It's only when you're around someone who's uncomfortable with who they are, that's when you will feel uncomfortable around them. That's what it is. Sit next to this cat. Looks very peaceful. But yeah, when you're at peace with yourself, you will desire to be around other people who are at peace. Other people who feel comfortable with themselves. But then you might hear that and think, so what's going on with all of these people then? Because I feel at peace with myself. I feel comfortable with who I am. So why are these crazy people getting around me? But that's the thing. Because when they get around you, do they accept your peace? Do they accept that you are comfortable with yourself? Or do they try to change it? Do they try to upset you? To provoke and entice you? To agitate you? If they do, then that's why they come out around you because being from afar and watching and observing your life and seeing that you're at peace and they're not it's just making them feel even more uncomfortable it's triggering them to reflect on their emotions the shame that they don't want to feel so then they've got to come around you and deflect that onto you so that's what it is that's why they gravitate towards people who are at peace with themselves because they're not at peace with themselves. But then at the same time, they will also enjoy being around other people who aren't at peace with themselves and aren't comfortable in their own skin because then it makes them feel like they're not alone. Just as for us, we feel comfortable with ourselves and we gravitate towards each other, and then that makes us feel comfortable from knowing that we're not alone as well. Because, yeah, we're not alone. I mean, I know sometimes these messages can sound pessimistic. I mean, unfortunately, yes, this is most people today. But there are still some of us who do feel comfortable in our own skin. Some of us who do still accept ourselves. I don't know, sometimes you may watch my videos and it's like, he seems pretty agitated. It looks like he's got something going on as well. And what I would say to that is that sometimes it may seem that way, but I'm kind of taking on other people's energy, other people's problems. I healed a lot of my traumas a long time ago. And I've been feeling good every day ever since then. It's just when certain people get around me, it affects my belief in myself. It affects my motivation. Sometimes it may make me think like I feel insecure, but I don't really. It's just because things are being projected onto me. And as soon as I get some time to myself, I feel comfortable in my own skin again. So what I'm saying here is that, yes, you can't be around most people, especially not for long periods of time. Because that's all that they're going to do to you. They're going to project their unhealed parts onto you. They're going to project these 
negative characteristics and traits have their negative emotions as well that they don't want to deal with they're going to project it and assign it to you and get you to identify with it and this is going to leave you feeling very confused because you're going to look at it like what am I supposed to do with this? This has nothing to do with me. But they're just going to go and dump that onto you. Just know that I am hiding all of the trolls in this live chat. Anyone who says anything offensive, anything strange, pretty much anyone who hates themselves is out. Unless you're willing to accept your own self-hatred, then we can work on that. Anthony Sanchez says your gay dog gonna hide you right now Lauren is begging for a shout out or she's gonna unsubscribe hide you SC says no one watches your videos you're hidden Another one of these weirdos saying I look like Eminem. I always see that same comment from different accounts so many times now over the last few months. BLM says stop being gay. Still waiting to get a moderator on here and then we will get all of this nonsense off the live chat. Because we don't want to deal with any of this. We're not interested in negativity distractions gaslighting we're only interested in the truth but this is how it is with these types of people I mean it goes along well with the title of the video if anything but this is how it is this is why you can't be around most people because They've got a lot of things that they don't want to deal with about themselves. And they're just going to go and dump it on to you. Even though you want nothing to do with it. It's got nothing to do with you at all. They will impose it upon you. They will impose a false character onto you. And it's because they don't want to deal with it. They're running from themselves. They're running from themselves by running to you. Because by running to you, they're then dumping these things that they don't like about themselves onto you. And then they're expecting you to deal with that. It's really crazy, but this is just how it is when you get around most people. But it will get to a point where it's like you see the hate, the negative comments, the insults, all of this garbage. And it doesn't even get to you anymore. It doesn't even hurt you. Because it's all about where you choose to put your focus. Whether or not you choose to tune into it or not. To feed into it. I bet I know there's a lot of teenage girls on social media these days and they get a lot of hate, a lot of negative comments. Sometimes it pushes them over the edge, they commit suicide, they take their own life. And that's all because at that age they are quite emotionally immature. They haven't developed enough to know how to deal with it. So then they're feeding into it. It makes them feel insecure. Like they're not worth anything. And then they assume, if I'm not worth anything, 
What's the point of me even being on this earth? Why do I even exist? So that's what happens to a lot of them and it's really sad. It's really sad that these people are still on here today making these comments. The amount of people who take their own lives. I mean with men as well. There's potentially hundreds if not thousands of men every day who commit suicide. I mean it's really bad and it's all because they're around the wrong people or even then potentially that's victim blaming. What I should say is that the wrong people are getting around them and they have no business being around them. They should get lost. They should leave them alone. But this is how it is because some people are so damaged, so traumatized. They've got all of this stuff going on in their lives and they want to come and dump it onto you. Basically, they can't cope. And if anything, they're the ones who shouldn't be alive. They're the ones who are struggling to survive. But they get around you and they will make you feel so miserable that you want to take your own life. When the way I look at it is, and if anything, I feel attracted to people like that. People who do feel insecure sometimes and they're able to express it. They can cry. They can express their own self-loathing. Even their own feelings of dislike for themselves. I feel attracted to th towards those types of people. Especially those who are being bullied because I know that is the type of person who's meant to excel in this world. And I know that because that's exactly the type of person I was. I was like that as well. And it's these people who come and put this onto you, they just need to go away. They need to go and deal with that on their own. Or if they're so miserable, are they going to take their own lives and that's on them? They should be strong enough to be able to deal with it on their own instead of putting it onto other people. Unless it's something where they can accept it, they can connect to their own emotions, then we can work on that then. Then we can make things better for them. But if they're denying it and they're disconnected from it, then what are we supposed to do? You can't just sit around them and let them bully you. That's not going to solve anything. And this is why you can't get around most people today. Because that is all they're going to do. They're not going to treat you with love and, and respect. They're not going to accept you because they don't accept themselves. And that's how you've got to look at it. It's like, how can I expect you to accept me? You don't even accept yourself. How can I expect you to know who I am when you don't even know who you are? I mean, like, that's the first step. If you want to know someone, first you've got to get to know yourself. If you want to be able to accept someone, first you've got to be able to accept yourself. As within, so without. You can't give someone something you don't already have yourself. So you've got to have that knowledge of yourself, you've got to have that self-acceptance, and then you can have that for someone else. But that's just how it is with a lot of people today. It's one of those things where it's like you get around them and they're so rigid. They're so caught up in their own negative emotions, their own problems. And you get around them and it's like that's all you can talk about. Everything has to revolve around them. Their traumas, their problems things that have nothing to do with you, it's not connected to you at all, you've got to deal with that with them, 
Sorry, I know there's uh, people coming around and distracting us. But this is what I have to deal with in a lot of my videos. It's very hard to ever find a quiet space. But yeah, you get around these types of personalities and they're so rigid, they're so fixed in their ways. And you get around them and everything just has to be about them. It can never be a moment, even for a minute, where anything could be about yourself. There's just no capacity, there's no room for you in there. And yet sometimes they will also use you as a, as a vessel and they will filter everything through you. It's kind of like, you're like a separate hard drive connected to their computer and they're just dumping all of these files onto you. You're like this external storage space for their own brains because they haven't got enough mental bandwidth to deal with it on their own. And so they filter everything through you and then whenever they need to because they never regulate their emotions on their own and they never heal their traumas then when they need to they're going to dial that up so that they can re-experience it again by cursory through you and then it medicates them temporarily in that moment but it never actually heals their traumas it never actually regulates their emotions consistently and over a longer period of time so everything they're doing when you get around them or rather when they come around you, it's just a temporary fix. That's all that it is. It's just a band-aid. It never actually resolves anything for them long term. And that's not what they're seeking, that's not what they're trying to do. I mean, that's where they're using you as this external hard drive, as this tool for what they want to feel or what they want to be in that moment. That's all that they're doing it for. And this is why you can't be around most people. Most people have so many things going on in their heads. There's so much going on in there, it's like the head is about to explode. And it does explode, it explodes all over you. And then you're left to deal with it. Because so many traumas, so many negative emotions have built up over the years. When you get around them, it's literally like their head explodes. And then it's like blood and guts all over you. And then you're left to deal with their shit. That's really how it is a lot of times. And it's because they can't go within and deal with that on their own. And yet again, it's not like a normal situation. But maybe someone comes to you and they're like, Yeah, I'm not feeling too good today. This happened. And, you know, they're looking for a little bit of comfort. It's not like that. With them, it's like this elephant in the room. They want to conceal it. They want to cover it up. And yet, at the same time, they want to poke jabs at you. They want to make you feel bad about yourself. And they just kind of dump all of this shit onto you. And it's like, it's a problem that can never be solved. Because... They're coming to you, they've got to be around you, and yet they're never actually presented what the problem is. They're never actually saying, okay, this is how I feel, this is what's going on. Let's talk about it, let's resolve it, let's correct the issue. It's never like that with them. And I think because at some level they already know, they have this belief that they can't solve it. They already know that nothing you can do is ever going to fix it. Because it's one of those things... We're just like ourselves, we have to go within and deal with the trauma, deal with the pain so that we can then be able to resolve it. We can't just use someone as, a, as an external vessel. Even with my sessions and with talk therapy, all we can really do is guide someone through it. But they still have to go through that themselves. We can't do it for them. But with these types of people, they're so weak emotionally, they're so immature. All they're going to do is just drag you through their mud. They're going to get you dirty, they're going to make you feel small, they're going to make you feel bad about yourself. Now that experience is never going to be any good for you. It's never going to feel good.
it's sad that it's gone to this point in this world but you really can't be around most people and what it comes down to more than anything it's like most people do not feel whole and complete on their own that's what it is because if they did then there wouldn't be a problem then it would be fine it would be okay they don't feel whole and complete so they feel uncomfortable with themselves they don't feel comfortable in their own skin and because they don't feel whole and complete then they get around you and it's like they're so needy they need you they need your thoughts they need your feelings and emotions they need you to take care of them to support them emotionally because they don't feel like they're enough on their own and this isn't like I mean I'm not saying that no one should have any friendships or relationships and we can't rely or depend on anyone of course I'm not saying that if there is a connection and there's an equal exchange but with these types of people it's like there is no relationship I mean a relationship is the way in which two people connect with these types of people it's like a one-sided connection they're like parasites and you're the host they're feeding from you they're like energy vampires they're sucking your blood because they don't feel whole or complete on their own and also they have a void they can't reciprocate anything back to you so all they can do is just feed from you and never give anything back so there's really nothing of value in it for you it's not going to serve you in any way you're not going to get anything out of it all it's going to do is deplete you it's going to make you feel bad about yourself it's going to make you feel less than who you actually are and it's because of the type of people type of people they are around if you're around someone who does not accept themselves and does not feel comfortable in their own skin then they're going to transfer that onto you especially if they're not self-aware and they're not emotionally mature enough to deal with that on their own or even just to accept it that it's there and to let it surface if they don't accept themselves they don't know who they are they deny themselves then that's going to get projected onto you and then you're going to be left to deal with that and that's really what you're experiencing when you're around them when you experience that stress that discomfort that tension that frustration and agitation because it's like you're dealing with a child in an adult body someone who can't own up to who they are to what they're actually about how they feel and the things that they have done they can't accept any of that and of course because of that it then gets projected onto you if they could accept it that that's who they are that's how they feel then it wouldn't get put on to you then you, you wouldn't have to deal with it for them but you do because they deny it in themselves if they didn't deny it in themselves there would be no problem But that's all that it really is they don't feel enough on their own it's kind of like they need your help your assistance with all of these emotions all of these traumas in their minds 
one of these things going on around and around in their heads and they can't accept it in themselves they can't deal with it so they've got to get it around you and project it onto you they've got to be like find some way to provoke you to make you feel the same way that they do to get you to resonate with how they're feeling inside and what's going on in their internal condition so then it's like they feel like you're on the same page and then they can extend that onto you they don't have to feel like they're alone and this is fine in in therapy like that's how it's supposed to be like when I when I conduct my sessions with my clients but at least with them they can accept their internal condition they're not coming into the session and projecting it onto me and trying to make it my problem it's like no this is what you're thinking in your head these are your emotions this is what you're going through and while I may have gone through that before I'm doing okay enough now to where I can guide you through it as long as you accept it within yourself but with these types of people you can't do that because they don't accept themselves they don't want to incorporate all these parts that make them who they are Instead, they wanted to sew in it and put it onto us. And this is why they're so immature. It's why they never grow. It's why they will remain the same for their entire lives. Because this is how we mature. This is how we then feel complete within ourselves. It's when we can look at not just the good parts about ourselves but also the bads we can incorporate both the good and the bad because when you do that you accept your shadow self and you incorporate both sides of you and everything in between to where it then combines and incorporates into into a into a hole I'm not sure of the exact word for it there is a word for that as well some of you may know but yeah when that happens that's when you find your authentic self you begin to accept yourself and that's when you experience your true power and you begin to feel happy every day full of life and energy so much motivation and then you have the ability to help and heal others as well but the reason why most people are just so miserable and they have no energy or enthusiasm the reason why is because they don't accept themselves and then they get around you and they got to put that on to you it's like here you go you deal with this you think about this for me you feel what I feel well, I just completely disconnect and detach from it, push it away, act like I'm nothing to do with it. And this can be very damaging for you when you're around these types of people for long periods of time. Because it's like you're around people who are like, they're denying who they are, they're disconnected from themselves. And it's like, okay, there's all of these crazy irrational thoughts, all of these negative emotions, these dysfunctional behaviors. And you're not taking accountability, but someone has to own up for that. So then we take it on, we identify with it. We assume that it has something to do with us. And then we try to mold ourselves into what they're presenting to us, even though it has nothing to do with us. So this is why we've got to be careful. you get around with these types of people 
and you can lose touch with who you actually are. Because they have no true identity. They have no core sense of self. So it's like if they don't know who they are, how are you supposed to know who you are when you get around them? What you need, what really encourages your development and strengthens your sense of self, it's when you get around people who do know who they are, people who accept themselves especially people who accept the bad parts of themselves as well. And that's why they get around you. Because you're authentic, you accept not only the good but also the bad. So they come around you and then it's easy to accuse and blame you. Because unlike them, you're willing to take accountability. You're willing to be a leader. You're willing to be strong. So then they can get around you and point at all of these things wrong with you. Well, they can sit back and be blameless and guiltless. So they're having a field day when they get around you. But it's no good because there's no progression in that. There's not going to be any progression around someone who doesn't accept themselves. They don't accept their mistakes. They don't accept what they've done wrong. A person like that is never going to grow. But you have to be willing to do that. just finished my tea again I do apologize for the noise I, I did try to get away from it but it does seem to follow me wherever I go the excitement wherever I go it follows <laughs> but I can try to move more over to this side make it a bit more quieter, a bit more peaceful for us. But yeah, that's what you're going to find is when you get around most people, they actually feel more comfortable when you don't know who you are. Or when you don't accept yourself, that's where they deflect the shame onto you. Because it's like when you don't know who you are, that strengthens their false sense of self. That's what it does. So of course they want to keep you off balance. They want to keep you in a state where you're not truly knowing who you are. And that's why when these types of people get around you, there's all of this chaos and drama. They're constantly manipulating you, provoking you, gaslighting you, spinning you around in circles to the point where you don't even know which way is up. They're doing that because that then strengthens their false sense of self. If you have a true sense of self, and you accept yourself, you incorporate both the good and the bad, you're not going to feel comfortable around someone with a false sense of self. If anything, you're going to want to bring out the true side of who they are, which incorporates both the good and the bad. And here's the thing. If that is the true side of them, and that is actually who they are, they're not going to be happy or excited about it. They're not going to be laughing about it. In fact, they're going to feel very uncomfortable. They're going to feel a lot of shame. I mean, if it aligns with their false sense of self, they might find some excitement, some joy in that. Because they're not connected to it. It's not their core sense of self. Well, as for us, because we are and we desire to be who we actually are, our true selves, because we accept that. When they bring something fake about us, it makes us feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it may make us feel a lot of shame. 
it doesn't make us feel good. I'm telling you, this is why you can't get around most people today. You may not even know it, but they got all of these things going on in their heads about you. They've got all of these ideas, all of these impressions, all of these things that they're thinking that you may be unaware of. And that's the thing, if someone does not align with who you actually are, and they're coming around you, and they've got all of these ideas, all of these thoughts about you, and they're getting around you with that, of course that's going to have a negative and damaging effect on you on your true character on who you actually are yes of course that's going to affect you because that's not you that's not really who you are your true self your true character does not align with these distorted impressions that they have of you and the reality is and this may be difficult to accept but the reality is that actually most people don't even care about who you are that doesn't even matter to them that's not even a concern to them because again they got all of these negative emotions all of these traumas that are unresolved and so all they're gonna do when they get around you is try to get you to align with their traumas with the damage that they've experienced in their lives that they never resolved they're just going to drag you into it they're going to try to get you to align with it so essentially in many ways they want to be you and they want you to become more like them and we do see that a lot I mean I've seen that a lot with my clients I've heard about it a lot in the comment section from the viewers is that there is kind of a role reversal when you get around these types of people people who are narcissistic it's like they become more like you at least for their false character and we begin to take on more of their identity and behaviors so you may find yourself becoming more toxic and negative just like they are because it's been proven that negative emotions are actually more contagious than positive emotions so just think about how damaging and how dangerous that is when you get around these types of people of course it's not going to be any good for you but it feels good for them at least in the moment because then they get it they get to come around someone who I mean because you're already whole you're complete you accept yourself when you accept yourself it encourages this willingness to be more open and accepting of someone else so a toxic person can come around you and you're willing to accept their ideas their thoughts their traumas you're open to it you're more suggestible and then that's how they're able to infect you that's how they're able to put that onto you because you accept yourself I mean of course when someone doesn't accept themselves and they're so negative they tend to push things away they'd rather just have their own ideas of it they're not they don't show a willingness to learn new things that comes from having an acceptance of ourselves and that's what I had to do myself is that when I was learning new things about narcissism and everything else of course one of the first things I had to do was accept myself I had to accept the good things about myself and the bad as well I mean that's what we have to do to be able to progress and move forward but unfortunately that's not what they're willing to do again if someone is not willing to accept themselves 
they're not going to accept you. If they're not willing to accept themselves, they're not going to accept you. So what are they going to do instead? They're going to... They're going to deflect everything about themselves that they do not accept onto you. Because they don't accept you. And they don't accept you because they don't accept themselves. But when a person does accept themselves, instantly there are these boundaries. There is a separation. You're no longer an extension of them. And then it's very clear where the problem is what needs to be identified, what needs to be solved, then that becomes self-evident. Of course, they don't want that to happen. They don't want it to get to that point. That's why they want to store everything. They'd rather continue not accepting themselves and instead just project that onto you. Because then by doing that, they can disown their true selves and continue to live out this fantasy. Essentially, that's all that they're ever doing is just living in a dream and a fantasy. But there's something else much greater. They have this false image. They pretend to be happy. They pretend like there's nothing wrong. So they're just living out a fantasy. And it's like this big elephant in the room. Whenever you get around them. It's like. Do we really have to play pretend? Do we really have to live in this land of make believe? I mean aren't we meant to be growing adults? But it's like they just haven't grown up. They still have to be like that. And they're always just constantly going to deny. Deny how they actually feel about themselves. And that's why it's so uncomfortable for you because you don't want to be like that. You don't want to deny, you don't want to gaslight yourself as they do. You want to accept yourself. And maybe if they actually came out and they accepted who they are, then maybe you'd be more willing to accept them. Because that's the thing, you can't accept someone who doesn't even accept themselves. They've got to accept themselves first before you can even really know who they are. And that's why it's so difficult for us as non-narcissistic people to really know exactly how they are. I mean, we can get an idea of it. We can see that, yes, they, they are very negative, very pessimistic toxic and dysfunctional and we know that because that's what they deflect onto us the targets or the victims so we already know that's what's going on in their minds I mean if you want to know what's going on in a narcissist's mind just look at how you feel following an interaction or engagement with them that will tell you exactly how they were feeling Just like if you're around a positive person, when you get around them, afterwards you're going to be feeling good. I mean, of course you are. You're not going to get around a positive person and feel bad. Unless, like them, you don't accept yourself.
or you're disconnected from your emotions because then for them to be around someone like ourselves a high vibrational person a person who is self-accepting when they get around someone like us it brings up these negative emotions because we are at such a high vibration so it instantly makes them feel bad about themselves but don't mistake that with when we're around them because they'll make you feel bad about yourself as well but that's because their vibration is so low it's so low that it just pulls you down because you've got to think what is lower than not even accepting yourself from not even accepting your emotions I mean that is a really low vibration that's shame maybe fear and guilt as well so of course it's not, feel good, not going to feel good when you're around them you're not going to feel comfortable in yourself, in your own skin. You're going to feel like you don't even know who you are. This is why I say you can't be around most people. You're not going to feel good. You're going to lose touch with yourself. You're going to be pulled in all different directions. And again, it's all just... A projection of their internal state in their heads however you feel when you're around them that's what's going on in their minds that's exactly what is happening it gives you insight into their way of thinking and into their feelings because if in the environment you feel confused you feel like something's happening to you you feel negative about yourself, about your life. You feel like you're being pulled in different directions. That's because that's exactly what's going on in their heads. And that's how they're feeling about themselves. And they can only give you what they've got. They can't give you something else. And just as for myself, this is how I'm able to get on here every day and be a source of comfort and stability to so many of you because while yes I do get around so many people and they pull me in all different directions to the point where many times I don't even know who I am I don't even know what I feel but then I still have that core sense of self within that's still there so even if they can get me in the mind, they can't get me in the heart. And I think um, I did see a study that said that the, the electromagnetic, um, I can't remember what it was, but it said it's like 5,000 times more powerful than the brain. It's almost like the gut is our second brain. So, yeah, they can get you in the mind, but they can't get you in the heart. And again, the reason why they can't get you in the heart is because they have no heart. I mean, you've got to think they don't even accept themselves. They're not connected to their emotions. So they can't get you in the heart. Which means, even with all of the mind fuckery, all of the head games, no matter what they do to you, no matter what they do to your brain, your heart is still going to be there. No matter how much they gaslight you. And that's what you've got to hold on to. They can get you in the mind but they can't get you in the heart
But I hope you've been finding this helpful so far. Of course, the entire video, I do get all of these comments. All of this negativity that I see. There's always all of this nonsense just the entire time. It's like people saying, what are you talking about? What's happening? I will be doing a video on that as well, funny enough. But these types of people, they are kind of like your conjoined twin. It's like they're kind of stuck with you. And it's almost like they just appeared there, like they didn't even know how they got there. They're just kind of along for the ride. And they're having to experience everything that you do. And meanwhile, everything is just making them sick. But no matter what, it's like they're still there. And you can't get rid of them. And it's like at the same time, they can't leave because they need you. Like they can't survive without you. So it's really sad, but this is how it is. And what I would say is that if you don't like my content, if it doesn't vibe with you, and if you're not finding anything helpful out of this information, if it doesn't make any sense to you, the question I have for you is, why did you click onto it? Why are you watching it? Why are you leaving comments in the live chat? Because it doesn't really make any sense. You're obviously seeking some form of self-medication in some ways. Because otherwise, why would you return to it? Why go to something just to complain about it and say how bad it is? Especially since if you don't even know the person, you've never even met them, just really doesn't make any sense. Why get around it? Just leave it alone. And then let the people who do find this content helpful, let them watch it instead of you constantly disrupting it for everyone else. But then that's how it is, isn't it? Because typically these types of people, they do only care about themselves. They don't care about anyone else because they're so trauma traumatized, so broken down in their heads that they haven't got the capacity to consider anyone else. All they can focus on is how, I'm, how am I gonna heal my traumas or at least medicate them temporarily so they haven't even got the capacity to consider anyone else i mean you would think a normal person i mean because this is how i think if i click onto something and i don't really enjoy it i don't find it helpful i'm not going to leave negative comments about it if i see other people watching it and they find it helpful, I would just think, all right, it's not for me, but it could be good for them. So why am I going to disrupt it? But clearly these types of people who do, it's because they're making it all about them. And they assume everything is about them. Everything should be for them. As I said before, narcissists, view the entire world as an extension of themselves which includes everyone in it they believe that everyone has something to do with them and if that's not crazy I don't know what is but that's exactly how they think but anyway we'll be getting a moderator on you soon because it is disrupting it's not welcome on you and in fact it is abusive it's disrespectful 
are these types of people who constantly harass others whether it's online or in person they should be in jail they shouldn't be given the opportunity to do these things to harm people they're abusers they're sick they're messed up in the head so they're not welcome on cure in my community we respect other people and it's because we respect ourselves and if you don't respect yourself enough to respect someone else then just go somewhere else and focus on building your self-respect until you then have the ability to do that instead of bringing everyone else down with you because don't you ever think or consider that maybe we don't want to go down to the depths of darkness with you maybe you don't realize that we're so much better than that that may be where you're going but we don't belong there so but of course that's for those of you who are growing are progressing are developing of course narcissists abusers it's just gonna go in one year and out the other they're never gonna cure they're never gonna understand the only thing they can cure is in their minds and their bodies it's just their, their trauma is just screaming at them in their year constantly telling them pay attention to this and then at the same time it's like no I'm too weak I'm not strong enough maybe put it onto someone else yeah that's exactly how it is for them and there's nothing you can do to help them that's why all you can do is just stay far away from them but you let me know down below in the live chat what you thought so far about what I've said to you has it been helpful for you do you have any questions let me know I gotta try and avoid looking at all of the negative hateful comments there are a lot of them I know and I think we all know why it does uh, it triggers people's self-hatred you know when you're being real when you're being authentic and you're just bringing reality to them a lot of people don't want to deal with it but yeah any negativity it will be taken off all of the abusive messages I'm just hiding all of them now John Wicked asks why do some narcissists talk in a patronizing tone narcissists are very egotistical they have this false sense of superiority and I say false sense because when you look at it what actually makes them superior I mean they take on this role as though they're the boss and they're in charge but they're not actually doing anything they're not bringing any value to you when you look at it it's all just a fantasy in their heads it has no basis in reality it's just one of those things where it's like they experienced in childhood something was done to them someone maintained an authoritative role over them and told them what to do and they didn't like it they wanted to do whatever they wanted because they're very entitled they're very arrogant so then they decided to take on that role and that's why they act superior they speak to people condescendingly as though we are beneath them 
when actually they already know that they're no good and that's why they don't want the shoe to be on the other foot they don't want, they don't want you to be telling them what to do so that's why they patronize and they look down on you because it's just a much easier position for them if they can be the ones who are telling you what to do I mean if you were the one telling them what to do what would they do I mean really what would they do they wouldn't know where to start Uh, good to see we got some uh, some viewers in the live chat Andrea says I'm reporting them Wendy says I reported the harassers thank you for your assistance there because I know it disrupts the live chat I mean the whole point of this community is so that we can have some space some time away from the abusers and we can focus on our growth healing from this and becoming better but again you know they know things are never going to get better for them and I guarantee it you could return to one of these people five years later or however long it is they're still going to be the exact same way they're going to have the same mentality. They're going to treat you the same way as they did back then. They're never going to change. They're going to be that exact same way until the day they die. Or if anything, they're going to get worse. They're going to get a lot worse. They're not going to be like us. Where I look back, I can just look back even one year ago. And I'm so much better now than I was back then so much more wiser, intelligent, more mature and even my empathy is more deeper and I'm more aligned with it I'm more aware of myself I have so much more knowledge it's never going to be like that for them they're always going to be the exact same way Yeah, there's always so many just strange comments in the live chat. Like for months, I've noticed there's always these comments like people saying you look like Eminem. And then people ask, are you, are you in Dubai? Are you in America? The sad thing about this is these types of people have probably been watching me for a very long time so they already know exactly who I am exactly where I'm from and then they deliberately what they do is they compare you to other people or they say you're from somewhere else because they want you to be someone or something else other than who you actually are because the way it works is if you're you and you're grounded in yourself and your own energy then they can't step into that and be you it's kind of like a demon there needs to be a void, a space for them to enter so they want to take you out of yourself and of course they can't be two of you so they have to destroy you this is why they hate you and turn against you because they want to be you that's essentially what it is and I will be doing a video about that as well in time I know I did do a one about that before as well and there was that uh, a little Kim Kardashian joke in the middle of it as well
What was that? Something, uh, I said something like, oh, you can put on a t-shirt and then suddenly you're Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian after a freak accident, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my early videos. I will be doing another one on that topic soon. Because it's true, they just really want to be us. And it's not like one of those things where it's like... Like in business, where they model other businesses, you know, whatever works, whatever makes the sale. It's not like that, where they just, they admire our qualities and they want to incorporate that into their identity to make something better for them. Like, um, an example could be, you see like a public speaker and when they talk, they use their hands. So then you start using your hands. It doesn't mean you want to be that exact same person. It's just you like some way about how they conduct and present themselves. And you see that you could incorporate that because it could work for you. That's completely different. I'm not saying that's bad at all. I mean, what these people do is they literally, they look at your likes and interests, um, your desires, everything that makes you you, your characteristics, your qualities. And they don't even really like it. That's not even something that makes them feel anything. They just see it as though you're getting attention and admiration by being and doing that. So then they want to take that on. But with them, it becomes fake. Because they're not honest about it. And they're not really incorporating it with who they are. It's only surface level. They're using it to manipulate. That's why it's bad. That's why it's narcissistic. But yeah, I will be doing a video on that in the future. So keep an eye on that. Hey, Ronnie says it's pointless to argue with narcissists. It distrains you. Yeah, that's really like the depths of their darkness is that they're so stuck in their own pit of misery and despair. There's no amount of energy that could ever pull them out of it. You can argue all you want. There's really nothing you can do. They're always going to be that way. So yeah, you're right, it is a waste of time to argue with narcissists. All that's going to happen is it's going to confuse you. It's going to bring you down, it's going to make you miserable. trying to look for genuine comments and questions here because as you may know narcissists they do shapeshift they are chameleons so they will try and mold themselves into victims targets or survivors and act like they're going through something just so you then transfer that energy to them into that void so I'm trying to be careful to avoid Anything fake on you? More and more the M and M comments all the time. Separate accounts as well, but they're all aligned on the same mission. But this is how it goes when you're communicating with those who, you know, they lack an identity, they lack a sense of self. 
I kind of want to impose these characters onto you, whether it's a celebrity or someone else. And then if you align with that, it makes them feel more comfortable because, you know, they don't have a self as well. But when you're grounded in who you are and you have a strong identity, that it makes them feel very uncomfortable because, of course, they don't have that. Well, that's just how it is. I mean, it's sad, but I mean, I don't know about you, but I often look at this beautiful world that we are in. See all the plants, the trees. Sometimes we get a few cats around here as well. These colorful fish. And even just myself. I love a lot of things about myself as well. Like my hair, I'm growing it out now. And I like my big eyes, my eyebrows, my lips. I just like a lot of things about myself, the way I talk, my confidence. And other people as well, I can appreciate so many things in them. I mean, there's so many things I love about this world problem with narcissists is they can't find fulfillment in anything and it's like why do you think they create this fantasy and they oppose these characters onto you because they can't find fulfillment in anything normal it doesn't do anything for them so that's why they have to do that in many ways they're really just experiencing depression they're miserable that's where they run away. That's where they've got to go into fantasy. Because they can't be happy with anything normal. Shaney says they will mimic your ideals. Yes, they will mimic your ideals. They will mimic anything as long as they think that it's going to get them some attention. Because remember, that's the whole point of why they create the false character to begin with. They wanted that attention, that admiration. They want to feel like there's something attractive and desirable, powerful and important. They want to feel like there's someone. So that's the whole point of the false character. And that's why they will mimic your ideals. And it tricks you into giving your energy to them. That's why they always want to know what you like, what you're interested in. They're always scanning you, monitoring you, seeing what you're up to next. They've always got to be two steps ahead of you. So that they can try and get ahead of where your energy is going to go. Because they want that energy for themselves. So that they can feel uplifted they can experience a temporary sense of relief from, from their pain and sadness. So yeah, Shaney, they will mimic our ideals. That's exactly what they will do. They will reflect your own qualities and virtues back to you. But yeah, be careful with a lot of these people in the live chat. Even though I can see they're saying some things. Seems kind of exaggerated. I mean, they typically do exaggerate it as well. Like they're saying. Playing the victim. Like, how do I fix the trauma? My whole life full of hate. Someone else, I'm struggling to get out of a toxic relationship. Sometimes they will say these things. I mean, they'll try and mimic us, pretend to be victims, anything for attention. Because when you, you get them into a corner and you shine the light on them and who they actually are, then they can't run from it. All they can do is own it. And that's when you've got to be very careful. 
because when they're owning it, they can be dangerous. They've got to play out that role of this new character, which is actually who they are. It's actually who they are inside, but then they have to create a character for it because they can't actually be themselves. So then there's this character, this poor victim, this damsel in distress, who then can justify doing anything, whatever they do to you. So then they can pull you in and they can abuse you and find a way to justify it in their minds. So be very careful and learn to know the difference between a true victim and a covert narcissist. I will have to do a video on that as well. Because a lot of them are getting by by playing the victim when they're not victims, they're predators. They're abusers, they abuse people every day. So we need to be aware of this. We do need to know the difference. But yeah, I'm seeing a lot of activity in the live chat today. Sadly, this is just how it is. They do make it very difficult for us when they play the victim. Or they have all these false characters. Anything to get attention. I mean, sometimes it's like, what is actually real? Like, who is a real person? Who's a fake-ass narcissist? So, yeah, we do need to have some videos on really identifying the difference. On how to see who is actually real. And who's just another COVID narcissist? I mean, what it all really comes down to is your intention, like what you're trying to achieve or accomplish. And if you have any hidden agendas or motives, that's all that it really gives. Because with COVID narcissists, they are corrupt. They have hidden motives. They're trying to get one over on you. They're trying to trick you. But with a genuine victim or survivor, they're not trying to do that. So that's really the difference in that. But I will be going deeper into that at some point in the future in a new video. But yeah, this is all I've got to say for this topic. For now at least just say goodbye to the fishes before I go but I do hope that those of you who do have some belief in yourself and in your futures and you are genuinely looking for this information and hoping to improve and be better in your lives those of you who are on here for that I'm hoping that you found this information helpful I'm hoping that you got something out of it and if you did hit the thumbs up button underneath the video let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm reading your comments every day. Hit subscribe and click all notifications so that you will be notified when I upload a new video. And don't forget that you can show your support to our community by leaving a donation through the super chat, the live chat, the super thanks in the comment section. Or you can go to my PayPal it is paypal.me slash narcsurvivor and also you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me by going to my website it is narcsurvivor.co.uk and you can follow me on instagram to see new pictures and videos of my travels which i upload to my stories every day on there it is narcsurvivor youtube and instagram 
I'd just like to thank you all for joining me again on another Narc Survivor Live video. I appreciate all of you. So grateful to have you here on my lives. And as always, I do look forward to speaking with you again in another one of my live videos very soon.